this video we're going to talk about air pressure and basically figure out how air pressure determines a lot of the different weather patterns that we see on Earth. So what air pressure is, is it's the force exerted by air molecules on a given surface. So the way this works is if we have uh, a bunch of molecules here, then in the gas phase, molecules fly around at high speeds, right? So these gas molecules, they'd be kind of flying around all over the place here, very high kinetic energy particles. All right, so these gas molecules are gonna be flying around and eventually they're going to collide with each other in the course of their motion. So they're, they're going to collide with each other, they're gonna collide with the walls of the container and that's gonna create pressure. Uh, so basically how pressure is created is through collisions between air molecules. So if we think about this container over here, we see the gas molecules have a pretty decent amount of space to move around. Uh, and if we compare it to the container over on the right here, these molecules, they're a lot more kind of cramped together, don't have as much freedom to move around. They're gonna be colliding with each other a lot more. They're gonna bump in, going to be bumping into the walls of the container a lot more. So this is going to be a higher pressure situation because we're gonna have more collisions. So the ways that we're going to have a higher amount of pressure is if we have a smaller space, then that's going to cause the molecules to bump into each other more. And also if we have more molecules. So if we took this same space here and put a bunch more molecules in there, we could imagine that these molecules would then collide a lot more because we would have a lot more molecules in a smaller or in the same amount of space. All right, so those are two ways that we could have uh, an increased pressure. All right, so one important thing to know about air pressure is that it pushes in every direction. So we've talked about gravity and how gravity only pushes downwards towards the center of the Earth. But air pressure pushes in every direction. So it'll push downwards, but also push from the sides. And you know, if the, if the ground weren't here, then air pressure would be able to push up on this, this girl sitting on the floor. So, so air pressure pushes in every direction. And that's an important concept to know here. If it didn't, then we would only have air pushing downwards, or maybe we would only have wind that went in, in one direction. It wouldn't really make sense. So it's important to know that air pressure pushes in every direction. All right, the next important thing to know about air pressure is that in terms of altitude or height or elevation, uh, air pressure decreases as we, as we go up. And the reason for this is, is that these air molecules have mass. So at, at the uh, bottom in lower elevation areas, we're going to have a lot more uh, clustered together, a, a lot more higher concentration uh, of air molecules here. So these are going to be bumping into each other a lot more. We're going to have more collisions. And essentially, the more collisions you have, the higher the air pressure is going to be. So down here, where the molecules are all kind of cramped together, there's going to be a lot more, uh, a, a lot higher air pressure than there is way up at a higher altitude. At a higher altitude, the air is less dense. The, the molecules are more spaced out, they have more room to, to roam around, and this is gonna cause a lower air pressure at the higher altitudes. So this is an important trend to note. As you go higher in altitude or elevation or height, then the air pressure decreases, okay? So down, down at sea level, at, at, the, at a low elevation, the air pressure is higher than it is up in the mountains. Uh, this is why if you've ever heard of uh, Denver, it has the nickname of the Mile High City, so the reason for that is its, it's elevation is about a mile uh, above sea level. And way up there, the, the molecules of air are very spaced out. And this is why if you've ever seen uh, a football game maybe in Denver, a lot of times the players have oxygen masks on the side of the field because these air molecules, they're more spaced out. There's not as much oxygen for them to breathe in the air as there is at a lower elevation. This is why uh, marathon runners will also often train in higher, al higher altitudes because if they can get used to running with essentially less oxygen, then when they come back down to sea level to run a race, they're gonna feel really good. Like, oh, I don't usually have this much oxygen. And so essentially they're preparing themselves at a higher level uh, than, than uh, they would be at sea level where they have more oxygen available. All right, so as you go up in altitude, air pressure decreases. That's very important to understand. So, air always flows from high pressure to low pressure. And if we think about uh, an example here, if we have a whole bunch of air molecules here, they're all kind of uh, cramped together and gonna be colliding with each other, uh, uh, with each other a lot. Uh, and then we compare that to over here, maybe we have uh, in the same space uh, a bit fewer molecules. We can maybe box these in to, 
to compare the same volumes here. All right, so if we, if we have fewer molecules in a space, there's gonna be fewer collisions and therefore a lower pressure. So if you think about this, if we had some of these molecules here in the higher pressure situation, and they could leave to this lower pressure situation, they would probably try to do that. If they look over here and like, well, I'm all unhappy colliding with all these people or molecules cramped in into this space and I could come over here and you know have a little more room to breathe, then they would probably do that. All right, so you could think about maybe if you were sharing an office with, uh, with let's say a, a small office that you were sharing with four or five people uh, and then there was an open office next door that you could take, you would probably take the open office and have more space to maybe stretch your legs or whatever you want to do while you're working in your office. So th that's the easiest way to think about this, is that high pressure molecules are going to be more unhappy than lower pressure molecules. These, these lower pressure molecules are going to be able to have more room to roam around. So this is how wind is formed, is that air is going to flow from high pressure to low pressure. So if we have a high pressure mass of air in one part of the United States, and then in another part of the United States, we have a lower pressure mass of air. Some of that air from the higher pressure part is going to try and move towards the lower pressure part where the molecules will again be trying to basically get themselves more space to move around. All right, so when we're describing wind, there are a couple of important things to know. So just a little review here, the top and bottom half of the earth, we call those hemispheres. So this is the northern hemisphere on the top and the southern hemisphere on the bottom. All right, so in different sections of the Earth, the wind is going to behave differently. All right, so in the northern hemisphere, we're gonna have different direction of wind than we do in the southern hemisphere, and even within the northern hemisphere, we'll have sections that have different directions of wind compared to other parts of the northern hemisphere. But in order to kind of understand uh, wind, you do need to know the vocab term hemispheres. Okay, so in the United States, in our section of the northern hemisphere, the wind generally blows from west to east. All right, so if you've ever seen a weather map before, usually what you see is the weather kind of going this way. Uh, in, in Buffalo, where we are, we'll see the weather kind of usually coming over the Great Lakes like this, and then we can imagine other places in New York that are further to the east, like Syracuse, uh, Albany, New York City, places like that. They will get our weather after we've already had it. So the, if we have like a, a storm system coming over Buffalo from the Great Lakes, usually Syracuse will get that same type of storm a few hours after we've already had it because the wind will carry the weather in that direction. Now this is not to say that the weather always moves from west to east or that the wind even always blows from west to east. This is just the general trend in the United States is that wind blows from west to east. There, wind, wind can blow in any direction and we definitely have days where the wind is not blowing from the west, but in general, most days, the wind is going to be blowing from the west in the United States. All right, and the name for these winds is called westerlies. All right, so how can we describe winds? Well, you already probably have a little bit of a hint here. When we're describing winds, we're, based on, we're, we're basing that on where they came from. So this is essentially their direction but it's not just any direction, it's dr the direction of their origin or the direction where they came from. All right, so these winds that we just described that were coming from west to east, those were called westerlies because they came from the west. All right, so with winds, you do not describe them based on how, how, what direction they're, they're blowing in, you, d you describe them based on what direction they came from. All right, so we describe winds based on their direction and also their speed. So some examples of this would be, maybe you could say there is a west wind of 20 miles an hour. And if you want to think real quick, what direction would that be blowing in? Well, it would be blowing from the west to the east. So a west wind of 20 miles an hour, we could describe like this. Or maybe a south wind of 10 miles an hour. So we need the speed to basically know how fast the wind is blowing. If it's a really windy day, you want to know ahead of time that it's going to be really windy out because you're going to probably prepare a little differently and maybe have some different activities planned for the day than you would if it were not very windy out, right? Nobody's going to go play Frisbee on like the most windy day ever because your Frisbee would get blown away. Uh, so the speed of the wind is important to know and also the direction. If you're, let's say, going, uh, this is why uh, if you're riding in an airplane, 
you're going across the country from east to west, usually the planes have to use more fuel going from east to west because they're going against those westerly winds that we have in the United States. Whereas when planes, planes are flying from west to east, usually they have to use less fuel than they would if they were going from east to west because here they have the wind kind of helping them along, along their path compared to here where if we're going from east to west, the winds are going to be, or the winds are going to be basically fighting against the plane as it's trying to go from east to west here. All right. So thank you for watching this video on air pressure and winds, and I'll see you in the next video.